Let us continue reading this book by J.A. Wiley, Despotism. We are now reading chapter 18. Our Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. It's only your spirit that protects us now from our enemies. And we know their snare. I pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Jesuit in Scotland, a European outlook. After the above fashion does Rome carry on her work of seduction in families, how does she proceed on the open stage of the world? She employs the same tactics, but with a wider application and with an eye to a larger issue. When it is a single individual who has been marked for destruction, the Jesuit, well skilled in his craft, begins, as we have seen, by awakening doubt. The first doubt opens the door for the second, and the man is led from one degree of skepticism to another, till at last his faith overthrown, he is fain in his loneliness and helplessness to throw himself into the arms of the church. When it is a church or a nation that is to be overthrown, the battle is ordered in the same manner. The first blow is leveled at that one great principle, for there is such in every society which is its mainstay that this cannot be better done than by sowing the seeds of diverse and strange doctrines. The sons of Loyola, now flocking to our shores, will not spare to sow such seeds. We may not see that seed as it falls. Its sowers will pass through the land at the dead hour of night, but such seed does not usually lie long under the plod. And the work of these sowers will speedily notify itself by din music, how sweet to them of our dissensions and wranglings, which will break out on all sides. There are two institutions in especial to which the, Jes the Jesuits will lay sage. These are the press and the pulpit. They will strain every nerve to possess themselves of both and work them for their own ends. The press of Great Britain is already manipulated by them to an extent to which the public but little dream. And have a few newspapers of a Jesu Jesuit under staff as editor or contributor or a reporter. The reporting force of the kingdom is to a considerable extent made up of Romanists, and the esprit de corps in such is such that a newspaper may, unaware to itself often, be influenced against the cause or an individual obnoxious to Rome, although it may have no Romanist in its service. There are names, the times they are not mentioned. There are causes. True noble, it dare not advocate. There are British authors as well as, as Irish farmers who are boycotted. The author speaks from documentary evidence when he says that the identical Jesuit has been traced through successive disguises in the journalism of the metropolis, now assailing violently in his own proper character of papist, and now in the disguise of pious Methodist, whispering into the editorial ear in oily face, how much he was pained by such and such an article in his columns. It was so lacking in the sweet grace of charity. The whole English press of the world is supervised, and the word is passed around how writers, speakers, and causes are to be handled, so that everywhere its verdict may be the same, and applause or condemnation dealt, out just as it may accord with interests and wishes of Rome. We'll continue to read the next paragraph, page 94, next time. May God our Father, bless you and protect you. His Son be gracious to you and